we eventually wound up developing this product, which has a heating coil on and the cooling um, component. So it's cooled just by airflow um, and then heated using a ceramic coil. Now we can time it, we can change the temperature um, so that we can modulate the consistency of the plasma. The way I have it set for six minutes at 90 degrees in four minutes cooling um, gives you um, a standard HA filler consistency. So if you've worked with um, uh, Jupiterm in the past, it's going to have that type of a resistance as you push it. Okay. Uh, you can actually bioincubate it longer to create a denser preparation. So if you want something that's more similar to say like Restlin um, or Voluma, okay. you, can, you can do that as well. Now, uh, for the face, I recommend these settings. Okay. But if you're doing like a Brazilian butt lift or something of that nature, you would want to use a slightly larger syringe than the 1 ml syringe, which is why this can also go up to a 5 ml size and process it longer to create a thicker consistency. Okay. When we cool it though, we're not stopping thrombosis completely, but we're slowing it down so much that you get about four hours of a window that you can play with okay. to use the product before it thickens to a point where you can't pass it through a reasonable gauge needle. Mm -hmm. Now when we process it at this setting, we inject using a 30 gauge half inch needle um, so we can use a really tiny application needle, which is very comfortable for the patient and minimizes bleeding. Yeah. Um, if you go up to eight minutes of processing the heat, that would take you up into that Restylane range, eight to 10 minutes. Uh, we would move to a 27 gauge needle. Yeah. And then if you're gonna be doing a Brazilian butt lift or anything like that, you're gonna go up to a 25 gauge needle and it's gonna process for still, 15 still minutes pretty, of heat still and pretty, five minutes yeah, of cooling. Still not, not, um, not. Now, Horrible. when we use the kits that contain hyaluronic acid versus the kits that are just PRP, the hyaluronic acid actually makes it more flowable. So while hyaluronic acid is more dense than PRP in its liquid state, it does not get affected by the bioincubation process. So it actually slightly thins out the sample and makes it easier to work with, which is why we can get away with tiny little needles and tiny little syringes and maximum patient comfort. But which, um, so, so you would use which kit for, for you're going to be doing that? Um, that's the one that I'm processing right now, yeah, the so HA kit. kit. So this would be an alternative for fillers for somebody who d really wants to do natural and doesn't want to use the... Well, we're non-cross-linked hyaluronic acid, so it is all natural, that's one thing. There's no chemical additives, so as a result okay. of that, there's no contraindications or side effects. Okay. Which is nice. Yeah. Um, if you've worked with any of the other commercial hyaluronic acid fillers before, mm -hmm. if you use too much or... Uh, have it in the wrong place, you have to inject the enzyme to break it down. Yeah, because it makes a little... And then you draw it out in, in like a, it's a goopy gel mm -hmm. that comes out. Um, you do not have to do that with ours. Okay. And ours are also pliable. So after you do the injection, it will thicken in the patient within about 20 to 30 minutes as it's exposed to red blood cells and regular vascular activity. But in that period of time, you can massage it and move it with a gloved hand mm -hmm. really easily. Mm -hmm. So you can actually do some post-injection sculpting with it, which is really nice. Let the patient look at it in the mirror, tell you exactly what they think. You can actually make some modification without having to inject any more product. Um, so that's pretty nice because when you're doing facial aesthetics, it's art. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're and, and different people want different things. Yeah. Some people want a more pronounced cheekbone. Some people want to keep a line that they think makes them look distinguished, but want to get rid of another or whatever the case might be. Some people like their lips to be pouty. Some don't want them to be pouty. So it gives you that ability to kind of individualize the presentation a little bit for that particular patient, okay. um, which is nice. How long does the patient usually have results from this? So when we use the hyaluronic acid PRP combination kit, Assuming they're not on anything that's drastically affecting their metabolism, like I've had some male patients that are using semorelin or high doses of testosterone and they metabolize a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. But assuming somebody is not on an HRT protocol that's drastically modulating their metabolism, uh, minimum six months, uh, maximum about 10 um, before there's enough volume loss for it to be significant. Mm -hmm. um, People that are using those uh, metabolic enhancement things could be half that time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had a patient who was on anabolic steroids because he was a heavy lifter and it lasted only six weeks. Um, that being said, uh, it'll last for a long time most people. When you do the PRP by itself without the hyaluronic acid, it's about half the longevity of an HA injection. So 
between three and six months typically it okay. results yeah, in PRP. Also say it's about a month, though, yeah. yeah, and again, it depends on the metabolism a little bit. So we actually developed this kit to address that fact. So now if we look here, you've got your red blood cells and your granulocytes. Above it, you've got your plasma, platelets, growth factor, and then right on top, that clear mm -hmm. is your hyaluronic acid. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how it comes out. And then we're going to uh, draw all that into a 10 ml syringe. And then we're going to draw that 10 ml syringe down into uh, a bunch of 1 ml syringes. So it's a little easier to apply when we're doing the filler. Cool. Mm -hmm. Probably going to get about 10 of these. <clears throat> and then I like to add a little bit of sodium bicarb. Uh, 8.4%, uh, which is going to counteract the anticoagulant and take all the sting out of the PRP kit. Now, our kits have very low amounts of ACD, only about a half an ml, so they don't really sting or burn much to begin with, but this will make it completely painless for the patient. Uh, you don't need a lot, a little bit, because there's not much anticoagulant in there. There's only an ml of anticoagulant in the entire thing. All right, so the gigantic scary needle in the kit is the 18 gauge spinal needle, and we use that as our draw. It's right. basically our draw camera. Uh, but if you ever want to have fun, you can kind of scare the patient. Scare the patient. <laughs> Here we go. So you can invert this and try and blend the hyaluronic acid in the tube, uh, but I find it a little bit easier to, to, to do it once I've got it in the collection syringe. Because you get all neurotic about making sure it's all mixed up and uh, then you can invert it too many times and mess with it too much and possibly break the gel separator layer and let some RBC inclusions in. So I leave it with the HA on top. What I'm doing there is just putting one of the 30 gauge needles in there to act as a vent tube so that when I draw my plasma, the vacuum container doesn't try to pull it back out. Yeah. Which makes it just a little bit easier. You always want to put your collection needle near the lowest point of the gel separator layer. That way you get all your sample, and then just draw it out, nice and simple. And then we get all the HA at the end there. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. And repeat. So I got a really good volume draw on this, so I'm going to get some of this air out. Yeah, so you just invert it a couple of times, yeah. and then you can see that the, there's no longer a layer of HA and a layer of plasma. It's all nice and well blended. Um, now you can process this the way it is, and it works great. One other thing that I highly recommend um, is syringe caps. So these are syringe caps. BD makes them. They're like 20 bucks a box. It's about any cap. And um, when we individually draw all of our 1ml syringes, we can cap them uh, so that we don't have, you know, 10 different needles that we're wasting uh, and, you know, hanging out all over the mayo stand. Plus, when you're dropping this on for microneedling, you don't need a needle. So it'll save you a little bit of money in your cost of goods. Um, also, when we're bioincubating, if you use a syringe cap, the needle will sit all the way down in, in the machine. Whereas if you have a needle on the edge of it, some of it will be above it, and then you'll get an inconsistency in the product. <laughs> so we got almost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 mLs of filler on top of the three mLs that we stole wow. for. Patient. Look at you. So you get right over right. Right. <laughs> So this is for you? Uh -huh. Okay. We need to balance it too. Which um, I'll, I'll prep one for you in just a second. Okay. Yep. 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 Sorry. No problem. So then you just take them individually and put them into the bio incubator. 
Oh, no, he said it's four and three. Oh. It is six minutes of heat followed by four minutes of cooling. So in her, because we have so many, we're going to use every single opening. <laughs> and then you hit start, and it runs two programs. It's going to run 90 degrees Celsius for program one, followed by 90 degrees for program two. Um, you can set it up with pre-cooling temperature and heating temperature, but it doesn't um, time the in-between where it takes the heat up. So I like to leave program A and B the same, um, just so that I know exactly how long we're processing. And I found this setting to be ideal for creating the right consistency of filler. The idea is to increase the molecular weight, get that coagulation to happen, but also keep the product flowable enough so that you're not having a hard time administering it to the patient. It doesn't feel lumpy, it doesn't cool, and you have the ability to blend with it. So that'll run for six minutes, and then we'll move it to the back for cooling for four. And then we're all ready to go. Once you cool it, you got about four hours that you could theoretically work with uh, before the coagulation gets to Do you leave it in the point. cooler? No, once it's done with the it cooler, out. take it out. Okay. Put it's it on your mail temperature. stand okay. or your um, cart or your rack, whatever you're going to hold it in before you do the application okay. to the patient, and then you're good to go. Yeah, at room temperature, it'll, it'll stay very pliable for up to about four hours. Not that we want to wait four hours to inject a patient. I mean, ideally, we want to go do this in a few minutes. Uh, but you can do it up to that. You can also refrigerate unused product, and it will maintain viability for up to seven days. When you use the cellular products blended with it, you don't want to do that. But if you're ever doing just the PRP by itself or the pure PHA, uh, standard refrigerator for up to seven days, you can freeze and defrost it for up to 30 days. Standard freezer, and then you're going to defrost it overnight in the refrigerator. Um, and then take it out before application to the patient. Let it rest at room temperature for about an hour to come to ambient temperature. So it feels weird if it's cold when you inject mm -hmm. it. Um, and then you'll be good to go. So you have a little more pliability with the uh, PRP than you do with some of the cellular products that uh, uh, are susceptible to die off very quickly. Because keep in mind, we're, we're primarily trying to get excretion of growth factors in the patient when we apply mm -hmm. this. So the whole thing about cellular viability is not a big deal because we're not trying to inject the, these platelets in the grand scheme of things compared to what's in your body or nothing. It's like throwing a bucket of water in the ocean. It's really that progenesis response we get once we put it in the patient world, the magic happens. Now, this has only been processing for about two and a half minutes, and you can already see how it's getting more opaque. Yeah. Um, so as you process it, it's gonna go from a clear straw-like color to um, an opaque, almost butter-like color. Um, that's how you know it's ready to go. Cool. So when it's done with the incubation, it makes that triple beat, and then we just move them to the, uh, the cooler. So now you've got that nice opaque consistency, and there's no more flow. Is it good news or bad news? Well, it's the it's perfect. Uh, So the front is uh, heating and the other one's cool? Yes, sir. Okay. And that came out perfect. I finally got the parameters down to it? where it's super oh. consistent. So see how it's better like mm -hmm. consistency? Yep. And now that air bubble doesn't move through it? Uh -huh. That's actually why we leave a little air in the syringe, because if that moves through the column, it's not okay. ready. So you'll see, I'll, sh I'll, put a, I'll push a little bit out before we inject, okay. so that you can see how, um, how good the consistency is. Okay, so now you have the cooling. Yep, now I have a cooling. Okay. And then just to show you what it looks like. You see in the same plot. Oh, no, you move the back. So oh, see how yeah. it now looks kind of buttery? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's uh, opaque and a little also lighter. Looks, mm -hmm. Also looks a little thicker, too. Yeah. It's a lot thicker. Yeah. So you can tell because the air bubble will no longer move through the column. Yeah. So that's how you know, you know what you're dealing with. So just to show you. I'll also put a camera up. Oh, that so, is much thicker. Sure. Yeah. Oh, look at that. 